Hey guys, what is up? This is Philbo. I'm going to be talking about my Lightning Mage build that I've been using. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions on Twitch about it, so I figured let me just go ahead and throw up a YouTube video about it to, uh, to quickly explain it. And that way I don't have to stop what I'm doing every time somebody asks about it. So feel free to ask a question in the comments or come hang out on Twitch and, and, and talk to us about, about this build or anything in the game. We've been, um, a, a bunch of guys have been popping in and we've learned so much together about the game, just hanging out. So please feel free to swing by. We'd love to hang out with you too. So um the the information is right there twitch.tv forward slash philbo 9k and we also have the information in the comments section but let's go ahead and just look real quickly at the damage i'll do a non-burst phase real quick here they're so just casting not using any cooldowns we're doing pretty good damage 1.9k and then I'll show when I pop the cooldowns, our damage cooldowns, so I have Shout of Provocation for extra damage, Release Element for massive damage, and then we also have a Totem that we can drop for even more. So let's see what that looks like. So let me pop the Totem here, and then we'll pop our Release Element and Shout of Provocation, and we'll see what that looks like. So it was up over 3 million for the duration of Release Element, so the burst potential is pretty high whenever um, you do pop those cooldowns, which is great during certain boss fights, which require a burst phase. So that's kind of the damage I'm doing right now. I haven't purchased any player power in the game. I have bought some of the packs, so I did get a couple of rare rune links. Um, uh, or, uh, a couple, I think one rune link and one skill that are rare so I ha other than that i haven't really purchased anything to boost my power so i had to get that out the way but let's talk about the build here let's look at the skills i'm running lightning chain uh lightning chain does good damage it chains from one enemy to the other so you don't have to do a whole lot of grouping with um with mobs and it shocks the enemy and we are looking to get shock applied as quickly as possible because shocked enemies take way more damage. I think default is 20%, but there's some things in the Zodiac tree which helps make your shock more effective. Um, and we are activating charge release. Charge release is also another lightning skill which has a chance to shock. So it makes getting shock up um, happen more frequently and your shock up time is almost it's always almost always up so um the link runes that we're using are quick cast quick cast is really important on lightning chain because faster cast speed equals you know more damage and then also getting your shock up w more quickly so this does uh, increases the damage significantly so if I, i'm almost at 600k on the tool tip when I take it off, it drops by like 120k, so it's really important for damage. 41% cast speed um, at level 31. And I'm also using additional lightning damage and spell damage increase to boost the damage even further. Uh, these three runes can be bought from the rune vendor. These two runes right here, Persistence and Lightning Penetration, are acquired through normal synthesis or through um, or normal link rune synthesis or through uh, some of the rewards you get through completing a rare chaos rift. Um, they'll sometimes drop, they'll, they'll give you, sometimes the rewards will be a box that gives you runes. And I've gotten persistence and lightning penetration from those uh, quite frequently. So one thing to note about persistence is it amplifies your strike damage significantly. Um, this is doing 29.4% strike amplification, and at rare level, it adds even more damage. But one thing to note is it does disable your critical hit, so we avoid critical hit nodes at our Zodiac tree completely, and on our gear, we don't touch critical hit. 
Um, I think right now, Persistence Rune is performing extremely well. However, as we move deeper into the game, we will probably migrate to uh, Critical Hit. Um, but right now, this is performing just fine. So I have not felt the need to switch out. I'm mapping fine. I'm getting through bosses just fine. And why, uh, why change it up right now? Once I start hitting a wall, I think I'll probably look more into critical hit, but right now this is what I'm running. Um, so these two are important. Lightning penetration, getting our penetration up higher is just, uh, you gotta have lots of penetration in this game. It, it, it increases your damage significantly. Um, the charge release, I'm activating on spell hit to charge release, like we said earlier, and I'm also using a persistence and lightning penetration rune on this to boost the damage. This is considered a strike ability here, so uh, persistence works on it. And I'm also using additional lightning damage here. However, spell damage, I think, might even be a little more... Uh, damage so eventually i might switch out to a spell damage increase rune and then finally we're using projectile acceleration because one of the things i'm not too crazy about with charge release is that it just does not move quickly the projectile speed is quite low without this rune it is at 690 currently um and when i add it, it increases it a decent amount and we get a little extra damage while we're at it so this is just some people somebody might not need that much speed on the charge release however i find it more enjoyable to watch it traveling faster and it also hits your enemies quicker so that's a good thing um so let's talk about some of the other uh skills we're using i use roll primarily for the uh, movement skill and sometimes i use teleport the reason I primarily use roll is because it has a lower cooldown and an extra use count. So you can use it more frequently and it has the extra use count, uh, which is very, very important in certain boss encounters. Um, however, teleport is uh, preferable in certain situations. So I have it on my secondary bar just in case I need it. So that's the movement abilities. And then for buffs, I use Bulwarker Protection for defense, 113% uh, armor right now at its current level. Um, with the element resistance, the resistance is probably the more important of the two. So uh, I have that and I'll pop this if I feel like I'm about to get hit or I'm concerned going into, uh, you know, a, a either certain packs of enemies or during a certain phase on a boss fight. Release element is our big damage um, cooldown. When we pop it, we get insane amounts of amplification and cast speed. So during burst phases, you want to make sure you're using that. And then um, uh, we use shout of provocation to increase our damage and our armor amplification. We get that as well. So that's a nice bonus. So if you're working in your burst phase, you want to use Shout of Provocation and Release Element, and I drop Weaken Element Totem if I can. I don't always drop it, but sometimes I will. Uh, if the boss is not moving a whole lot, it's good to burn it down with Weaken Element Totem. Um, and then I put runes on these, uh, these skills here to either uh, lower the cooldown so here we have time acceleration. It uh, it lowers the cooldown on these skills. Increase duration increases the skill duration. And then we also use lingering shout and hush shout. These aren't mandatory or anything, but I use it just to get more uptime on my shout of provocation. Um, one other thing I want to know, I didn't talk about it, but this arm is extremely useful for getting the cooldown of your movement abilities down. This is lowering the cooldown by 26.6% at its level 26 uh, on my roll, plus an additional 20% um, at the rare level. So that gets your cooldown um, down significantly. So that's what I'm using. If we look at our primary skills here, or the primary skill bar, I have roll, and then I have my buffs. A release element, bulwark of protection, and shot of provocation. On my secondary bar, um, 
the I, that's where I have my totem and then also teleport for when I need to use it. Uh, and that is what I'm using. I did buy the trigger slot. You don't need it. You could throw your activated spell on your secondary bar and it works fine. But I think for a million, this is great. Uh, and I can put that in my trigger slot and freeze up my secondary bar to, to add other skills to, to kind of um, suit certain situations. So that's the skills we have. And we're going to pop into the Zodiac tree and quickly go over them. For the stats, we have strength at, I have it at 194 simply because Shout of Provocation at its current level requires 194. If I were to go back, I probably wouldn't level up Shout of Provocation as high simply so I didn't have to put strength where it's at. But getting extra HP and armor is not a bad thing, so no big deal. And the rest goes into intelligence to get just a little more mana. But really, barrier, I think, is the big thing that we're looking at. Obviously, more mana is a good thing. Um, so that's a good benefit. But we'll talk about barrier and how important barrier is as we go through the Zodiac tree and um, our gear. But I'll tell you this. One thing that I've learned is as I migrated from armor gear to barrier gear, my survivability went way up. I started noticing, okay, I don't need armor quite as much as I thought. Most of the time when I'm dying or taking a lot of damage, it's from elemental damage, not necessarily physical damage. So, especially in boss fights. That's that. Let's go through the first tree. One thing to note is that I do like cast speed. Cast speed uh, helps us get shock up more uh, quickly, um, and it adds a lot of damage. Just being able to cast more quickly, you get more um, you get more hits in. But at the same time, it sucks mana more quickly. So if you're having big mana issues, you might not necessarily want to put all these points into cast speed. However, I do. Um, you could take these out and put them into some of the damage nodes. I do find that cast speed adds a little more damage than just the straight. Uh, damage on on the zodiac tree so i i tend to favor cast speed but if i was having mana issues i'd probably drop some of these so that's what i do i grab everything in the first tree here i go and grab these first five here um this would be a good candidate obviously if you want to drop some cast speed and add more damage for many efficiency uh so that's the second tree the third tree I go all the way through the middle here to get the element resistance. Uh, element resistance is huge. You wanna make sure that you're prioritizing that in your gear and not, um, not. we'll talk about it more in the gear section, but don't, don't sacrifice a ton of element resistance just to boost your damage more. If you don't have the, enough element resistance, um, you're, not, you're, you're gonna die a lot more and you can't do any damage when you're dead, so. Um, I'm taking these two nodes here for the extra AP, HP. However, further on down the line, I might drop these for more damage, but the extra HP is really great right now. In the fourth tree, I'm going down the middle here and I'm picking up this 20% area of effect node. Um, this is also a good node here that I'm considering picking up in, in, in place of something else. Um, but the area of effect is huge because it actually increases the distance at which you can cast your lightning chain. So you want to make sure you're picking this up. Um, there's another node that I pick up later on in the Zodiac tree that gives 40% area of effect. And between these two uh, trait points, I went from 750 cast distance at rare on my lightning chain to 950. So that was a huge 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 increase uh, in my distance and just grabbing that allows you to uh it, it increases your survivability significantly being able to add more distance between you and the enemy and then also it allows you to continue doing damage during certain boss phases on on some of the bosses that you might have had to stop doing damage because you just weren't close enough to the boss so more damage and more survivability just by increasing your range. Um, so that's the fourth tree. The fifth tree, we're grabbing barrier and then grabbing this last node on the end. So we're going through here. 
Uh, I was originally doing armor, but barrier is just significantly better. So definitely do the barrier. Um, and let's see here on the sixth tree, I'm grabbing the lightning nodes. And then we're also grabbing cast speed. This 4% cast speed is huge, huge damage. So I like this. Again, mana issues, you might want to drop these for something else. I do take them. Um, in the seventh tree, in deadly poison, I grab all of these shock uh, traits here because the shock effect... 20% of what I'm told is that the debuff of shock increases damage uh, amplification by 20%. I could be wrong about that. That's what, just what I've been hearing. I haven't actually seen a tooltip that indicates this, and I haven't tested it out. But if you were to just do the math, 20% shock effect times 20% amplification, that's basically 4% damage amplification. 20% times 20% is 4%. So... 4% damage amplification on shocked targets, 4% amp is big. Um, you're also getting 30% here, so that's good. Uh, and then shock rate, we're shocking more often and the duration is longer. So your shock is going to be up quicker and um, up longer. So you'll have shock uh, uh, up and it's more consistent for you. That's always a good thing. All right, so we have that. And in this tree here, I do waste two points in area damage to get this extra area of effect. I'm looking for ways that I can potentially get area of effect through um, maybe gear, but I, I haven't done enough um, research on it yet. But for now, this 40% adds so much distance that I think it's worth, uh, or so much cast distance that I think it's worth wasting these two points. Um, I feel like I'm surviving a lot more and actually doing more damage on certain bosses because I can continue doing damage since I can cast at a, a longer distance. I think that this is well worth the investment at this point in time. And then I'm also working towards this 40% damage for two seconds upon miss because we do miss bosses a lot and 40% damage I think is really good. Eventually, I also want to grab hit rate this hit rate and damage against the leads um, for the extra damage. So that's what I'm doing here. And finally, I put three points into this, this barrier. 12% barrier is really great. And we still get a little bit of damage here. So these three points, I think, are really good to boost our barrier. Um, and then finally, in our Zodiac Tree 8, I am grabbing dual wield because I do dual wield. A lot of people dual wield scepters, the earthquake scepters. A lot of people dual wield sudden death wands. I like sudden death wands. They do a lot more damage. They don't have the resistance um, inherent uh, um, stat that the earthquake scepters have, but you can always fill that in with other gear and potentially even your mastery points, which we'll talk about mastery later. Um, but for me, we do dual wield. There is also a case for using shields. Shields add a lot of survivability. Um, right now I'm using dual wield though. I might potentially switch to shield later on if I feel like I need it. But right now I'm fine with dual wield. I like the extra damage. We go dual wield. We go all the way in and grab this so we can get the 2% movement speed. And then also 6% cast speed down here is really, really big. Um, we're also going into farmer five points to get a really big barrier increase. This, uh, increases your barrier significantly. This amp right here is well worth, uh, this, um, downside that we, we get, but it just, it boosts it so much. I, I have to take it. It's five points well spent. So that's that. And then in our specialization, I go for shade. I was originally using brilliance, um, but I felt like brilliance, while it does a little more damage than shade for this particular build, it is less mana efficient and it comes at some survivability uh, downside. So I'll, I'll just 
go real quickly in the second part of uh brilliance getting um getting like the the extra damage out of this is going to cause you to take more elemental damage and some people have told me well just don't take that but the upside to taking brilliance is to get the extra damage so um for me it was like ah, I, I don't think i'll do it i don't like that extra damage amplification and um it's also a lot less mana efficient if you don't take convert mana uh i'm not a big fan of convert mana however i am considering um playing around with it when i get more barrier convert mana just takes some of your life if you run out of mana and converts that into mana I'm not crazy about that, but I'll look into it a little bit more. Um, but this uh, brilliance, uh, just a little bit more on it, more element amplification at a mana cost. So when I switched from this to shade, I started. I noticed that I didn't take a big hit in my damage, um, but I gained more survivability and my mana efficiency was significantly better in shade. So in shade, I go all the way in and get the strike damage amplification and overpower. Overpower adds main element damage and element penetration. So it's really big. And I, I really think that having the extra movement skill rune uh, use and lower cooldown is extremely important on boss fights and for moving more quickly for farming. Um, I I have to take this. I love it so much. I don't think I could drop it at this point. Maybe further along in the game when we get more to drop our cooldown. Um, I might drop out of this and not get this because they also have this in Brilliance. But for now, love it. I, I couldn't live without this right now. So that's what I do there. Um, in the second part of the tree, this is why I like the shade uh specialization so much you get you come down here and you get this critical hit disabled you get a 20 percent damage amplification on strike now this pairs super well with persistence because persistence adds all that strike amplification but it disables critical hit so we don't have critical hit anyway so this synergizes so well with it and then we come down here, we grab acceleration, we get all this extra cast speed and movement speed, which is super important. And then we get this strike amplification. Very straightforward, really nice thing to have. Um, in our final part of the tree, we're going to the bottom uh, tree here, Creek, and we are getting this extra debuff effect. So it's making our shock more effective. And one thing to note about shock effectiveness or, or, or debuff effects is that it increases the effectiveness of shocks for us and for people who are in our raid. So when you're doing a raid, um, you're actually increasing and making your shock more effective for all of your party members and your raid members, and they're able to do more damage as well. So that's important. And then we get amplification against debuffed enemies. I'm also going up and getting element penetration here. Element penetration is extremely good. So we want to get that. And finally, I used to take this element damage amplification upon barrier deactivation um, because I didn't have a, a large barrier. So if you don't have a large barrier, I think this might be a good short-term thing to grab. However, I've dropped it and added damage. Um, I don't recall the name of the rune. If I had the rune that lets you toggle from Wind Veil and Earth Veil, um, the rune actually adds uh, projectile uh, dampening on Wind Veil and I think uh, melee dampening on Earth Veil. I, I'm not 100% sure, but if I had it, I'd probably use it and get the 12% movement speed and mana regen when I needed it. Um, that, that's something I don't foresee myself getting anytime soon because it is a rare skill rune. Um, so I would drop this barrier in favor of this if I got it. But this is what I have. This is probably something I'm not crazy about. I do like completing to a good node if I can. Um, but this is what it is for right now. 
Uh, so that is what I have in the Zodiac tree. So real quickly, um, if I miss anything, you know, feel free to ask, but we're going to move on to the, uh, the skill, the, um, we're going to move on to the gear. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about mastery and then also our, uh, our, um, our charms that we're using and also the, uh, what is it called? The relic. So let's go through our gear first. I'm using sudden death wands. Sudden death wands have great uh, base speed at 1.5 and they have incredible minimum or a really high minimum of 145 and a really high max of 255. If you need more resistances, you can always grab earthquake scepters. Um, so I use sudden death wand. I like the extra damage and I try and pick up element resistance throughout, you know, with the rest of my gear. So big thing to pick up on your weapons would be your lightning damage. This adds a lot of damage. Um, you can also get spell damage. Actually, let's look at this other wand here. Um, so lightning damage is important. Spell damage is a good thing to have. You can also get spell damage percent. And then also you could get lightning percent damage on here as well. So those are things I'd be targeting. Um, hit rate is, is really good to have. Um, I think hit rate is extremely undervalued and underrated. Um, if you were to go look at your uh, your attack, you could see that your hit, you're not hitting 100% of the time. You miss a lot. So if you can increase your hit rate and you hit more, obviously you're going to do a lot more damage. Um, don't neglect hit rate. If you get it, it is a huge damage increase uh, that a lot of people avoid. They like seeing those big numbers, so they're trying to boost their damage, but Hit rate is probably way more important when you're not when you're not getting close to hit cap than just boosting your damage. So don't neglect it. Other big things on the weapons would be attack speed. Attack speed um, really increases your damage significantly because attack speed translates to cast speed on weapons. So there's that. That's what I go for on the weapons, and then on gear. What I think you should be targeting on gear, and we are primarily, I do go for all barrier gear now. I've found that life has got more simple since I switched to barrier. Um, having a big fat barrier adds to your survivability. That's been my experience. Dropping armor down, I went from like 50% armor to like 15. I don't notice much of a difference because I primarily die from element damage. I do occasionally die from physical damage, but we we have Bulwark of Protection and Shout of Provocation to boost up the armor if we need it. So if I pop both of those at the same time, my 15% goes to like 40% of physical reduction. So we do have ways to boost it. I do like barrier gear more though. I, I've found that it just, I, I survive more, so. Um, target gear barrier on your gear um, and resistances don't neglect resistances if you can get resistance on your gear do get it don't re-roll it because you're like oh it's uh it's not more damage i can be finding something with more damage or it's not as flashy you gotta have resistance do not neglect it you can't do damage if you're dead so um Definitely get that. Uh, another thing is mana. Uh, maintaining mana is a big issue, so you can get mana regen on a lot of your gear. So your chest piece is a huge source of mana regen. Uh, definitely be targeting mana regen on your chest if you can. You can also get it on your helmet. So on here, I have mana regen on this other helmet. Um, let's see, I have mana regen on gloves. You can get it on gloves. Um, and you can also get it on uh, your shoulders as well. But we'll talk about another piece that gives massive mana regen. Uh, 
and probably the greatest source of mana regen in a little bit, which is the belt. Um, so those are some things I'd be looking for. On your hands, you can get, uh, this is an authority piece, so it's got element damage on it. But if you don't have an authority piece, you can get uh, cast speed on it. This one doesn't have, I thought this one had cast speed on it, but you can roll cast speed on your hands, which is a big source of damage. And I might consider rolling that if you're not having much mana issues. Um, and on boots, I would definitely, these are unique, but if you're running boots, getting more movement speed is just, it's really important. You have to get it. Um, more movement speed is more survivability. It just is. So definitely do that and then target, you know, barrier and uh, resistances there as well. When we look at our neck piece, you can roll element damage, cast speed, and um, I'm pretty sure you can roll cast speed on a neck. So you can roll element damage, cast speed, and then your element. Um, this one has poison damage on it. Obviously, I'd like lightning damage on it, but I've been spending more time mapping than actually crafting because I'm trying to uh, get to max level as soon as possible. Um, so that's what I have on this neck piece, but those are some things you might want to target. Uh, I'm using this unique belt wasteland stream just for the potion effect on it right now. Um, I sniped this for pretty cheap on the auction house. That being said, there are better, uh, I think there are better options. Um, but this one gives you a massive potion effect and recovery, but on uh, just a regular belt, you can roll a really high mana recovery percent and also um, reduction. And if you get there an authority piece, you can even get mana potion effect on it. So there are some authority pieces that are just insanely good for mana recovery. And I think that if you are looking for the best bang for your buck on mana recovery, it's going to come from your belt and you have to get it from your belt. So that's one thing. If you're still having mana issues, there are some Zodiac trees that you can dump into making your mana pots more effective. But um, those are just some ideas to, 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 keep, your, to keep your mana up. Um, on the rings, you can get damage from hit rate cast speed, and I think this might be a better uh, ring to, to show, but you can get cast speed, element damage, hit rate on them. So I'd be looking for that. There are some rings that you can get that give element damage as the uh, as the actual stat that it comes with. So I would look at those maybe as starter rings, and then you might want to switch over. I'm trying to switch to barrier rings just to beef up my barrier a bit. Um, but those are some things I would look for on the rings. And uh, on the neck, if you're going to get one, this one has item drop rarity on it, but they also have a neck piece that has cast speed on it, and then one that has element damage on it, if you're trying to get more damage out of it. So that is what we're using here. And then for charms, I would suggest that you find charms from Cast Thor's Vigor. If you can get four um, tier six rare castors um, uh, charms, you will get 10 Ellie resist all, 50% element damage, and 10% damage taken decrease from element. This is huge. So getting four of these, I always try to obviously targeting element damage is big. You can get other things like barrier on it. So um look for that this one here has hp uh, but i would also mention that if you are really low on one particular resistance um every uh, there's charms out there for every single resistance i was low on fire resist so i said hey let me just throw this one in there get my resistance up and at a tier six uh rare level you can always um you can get this uh, this 20% just with one charm. So those are some, some thoughts that I have on charms. Um, and then real quickly, we'll look at masteries. Masteries you get by increasing your enchant level and you can put, uh, you can put uh, points into it to increase uh, either your weapon or your damage here or your survivability. I would view 
um, mastery as a place to fill in gaps that you have. So if you are lacking in elemental resistance, you can go into armor, grab five points into, uh, or, or grab some points. I think three points, actually. You only need three points. Um, yeah, so you only need three points here to get element resistance. So you could throw three points in here just to pick up points into element resist if you're severely lacking in it. Um, otherwise, just add more damage. Um, but this is a good spot to fill in gaps in your gear, and it doesn't cost a whole lot. I can I can um, reset this for 15,000 gold uh, and pick up some element resistance if I need it. However, right now, I'm going five into attack, uh, seasoned attack one to get extra attack damage five into the extra percent damage and then the two options here that i tried out were element penetration for detect weakness so this five points in gives you 15 percent and uh acute strike gives uh amplification um so five points in would give you three percent here of damage amplification I find that the element penetration is more damage. It's better. Um, that's been my testing. It seems like it does more damage, so I'm rolling with that right now. However, I have dropped this for resistances, and there's some other things in here that are really nice, like damage taken dampening. Five points in here will get you 6% damage dampening. That could be really, really big for survivability. So if you're dying a lot, you might want to swap out of this for the damage and grab some survivability. Get get the uh, barrier and armor. Get the resistance all if you need resistances. There's some other things in here, but I think that this is probably the um, a high value uh, thing that you can take here. And then um, that's nice. If you're using a shield, you can add more shield block. So there's a lot of options here to gain survivability. Um, and I might look into accessory later on because there's some movement speed, which looks kind of interesting. I could see myself taking this in the future. But for now, the damage is the route I'm going. Use this to fill in gaps, though. That's it. Um, so that's that. And then finally, for the relic, I'm using Avatar of Acubin because the skill that it uses, it, it inflicts a curse on enemies, uh, which lowers their lightning resistance, which is really, really big. So I like using that, um, the Avatar of Acubin for that. Um, I haven't played around too much with the other avatars, so there might be one that's better uh, for me right now, but right again, this is something easy that you can reset. It does cost a little bit of gold, but if you find something more effective, you can always change over. So I'm using Avatar of Acubin right now. Um, so that's it. That's the that's my entire setup. And let's just go run really quickly. Uh, let's go do a chaos run just to see how it. Um, how it performs and i'll talk a little bit about what i do in a chaos run um let's go ahead and identify an eight and just boost it up a little bit here here let's uh let's just keep it at level three get rid of this okay so let's do a level three tier eight card i wish i had a tier nine rare right now to to show that but this is what we have so let's go ahead and activate this and i'll just show how uh kind of how i put my play style and um maybe some tips along the way that i i use to get through the run so let's turn on attack i think one thing that's important and let me summon this guy so we can get all the all the drops but one thing that's important is that you don't, if you're running through minions or, or mobs, you don't want to stop a whole lot. You kind of want to do this stutter step where you're casting and stutter stepping because you'll be able to cast in between while you're doing this, but you keep moving. So if projectiles are coming at you, um, you tend to dodge them while you're stutter stepping. If I go into a group of mobs that I get concerned about, 
I will pop my bulwark of protection and shout of provocation um, right before in case I get hit and I don't want to die. And if I see a really beefy mob that I think might take a little bit to get down, um, usually, usually like some elite mobs, um, I will pop my release element. So we'll do that. Let me, uh, I just popped the speed potion to get through this thing a little quicker. I highly recommend using speed potions um, to in farming uh, these chaos dungeons because it does help you get through them a lot quicker. All right, so we're 50% through. Um, do stutter, keep stutter stepping. Don't, don't stop. As soon as you stop and start casting in place, you're gonna die from projectiles. These guys just shot a bunch of projectiles because I stutter stepped out of the way. I was able to maintain my lightning chain damage and um, not get hit by the projectiles. Another thing that's good is if you come up onto the mobs, you can just roll out of the way, uh, and the projectiles tend to uh, hit, tend to hit, uh, or they tend to go where you were before you rolled. So it gives you a little bit of time, like right there. I just rolled past them, and the projectiles would have gone through uh, that way on the bridge. So these are just some things that I do when I'm running to make it, uh, you know, to be a little bit more defensive when I am uh, running my chaos maps. It also works really well on bosses when you stutter step because the same sort of thing happens. They'll shoot at you with projectiles or whatever they're doing and um, stutter stepping keeps you from getting hit and rolling past keeps you from getting hit as well. So this is why I like having more rolls and a lower cooldown on it. It's really important to kind of stay out of the way and that just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so we're getting through this uh, rift. I'm not going as fast as I normally would because I'm trying to be prescriptive about how you how you like might uh, play a little bit better. And um, but let's go ahead. I, normally, I, I think it's good to finish your dungeons. You get more. Um, you know, you're in town less. That's a good thing. So let's go ahead and do the boss, and we'll, I'll just show you. This is a really easy boss, but he does a swipe, so you just roll out the way. Get to continue doing damage. Drop the totem for even more damage. Pop release element. Stutter step to keep out of his way. So he just did his projectile. Your extra rolls will get you out of the way of these AOEs. And so it's fun. It's fast. And I think it's pretty defensive build. But that's how it works. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. Hit the like button if you like the video and uh, feel free to pop into the Twitch channel and uh, just hang out and talk to us. Like I said earlier, I've learned a lot from a lot of the guys who've been coming in chat and um, we've just been bouncing ideas off each other and it's been a lot of fun. So feel free to pop in uh, and hang out. But until next time, thanks so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll catch you next time.